Here's an example of a goodness of fit test for a uniform distribution of frequencies. In this example, we assume that the city of Wuhan, China has six bridges. Tolls have been placed on the bridges in an effort to evenly spread traffic across them. Planners would like to know, with 95% confidence, if the tolls have been successful at evening the traffic out during rush hour. To do this, they count how many cars pass over each bridge during rush hour and come up with the, frequent, with the following data table. So in this table, we have six bridges. There are two bridges downtown in the center of city and four bridges that cross the river further outside of town. For each bridge, we've documented the traffic count. In order to use a goodness of fit test for a uniform distribution, what we are doing is to see if these counts are, are uniform, to see if each bridge has the same amount of traffic. So let's set up the null hypothesis. HO is that the traffic counts traffic counts are evenly distributed evenly uh, distributed the alternative hypothesis is just simply that they aren't evenly distributed now a lot of you will be looking at this data table and asking well I can see that they're not evenly distributed so why are we doing this test we see that this bridge has 140 this one doesn't have 140 and therefore by definition they're not even but what I think you need to recognize is that these counts are a sample of cars that are passing over the bridges and therefore just because the samples are slightly different doesn't mean that the population traffic counts are actually different from one bridge to the next and therefore these differences that we have that we're seeing here might just be caused by sampling error maybe there is some random chance involved and we happen to see a higher you know a higher than even traffic count here and a lower than even traffic count here what we are going to do is use statistics and use mathematical theory to convince ourselves that the distribution that we have here is not even. So we are going to test to see if they're even, but the alternative hypothesis is that they aren't even. So that was step one. Step two is we're going to use a goodness of fit test, which is a chi-squared statistic, chi-squared statistic, and we have k minus one degrees of freedom. So in this case, we've got k equal to 6. There's six groups. So we've got 5 degrees of freedom. We want it to be 95% sure, and therefore we'll set alpha to 0.05%. So in this case, we're going to have a chi-square distribution, something like this. Here's going to be chi-square equal to 0 and here's going to be our critical value. Let's look up the chi-square table for the critical value. Table F gives us the uh, p-values p values for different values of chi-squared for different degrees of freedom. So going down the, the rows are different values of chi-squared and across are different degrees of freedom. The area or the number given in this table is the area to the right of the chi-squared. So in this case, it's the area to the right of 7.8. We see that that's about 2% based on this table, when we have a chi-squared curve with two degrees of freedom. So in order for us to have a, uh, a critical value where alpha equals 5%, we're going to be looking for the value that has 5% of the area in the tail and we have five degrees of freedom. So we'll look down this column, we get to 10, and we still have more than 5%. So let's go to the next page of the table. Here's five degrees of freedom. And we see that when chi-squared equals about 11, or equals 11, we have about 5% of area in the table, uh, in, the, in the tail. 
So if we go back to our chart over here, the critical value is going to be about 11. So a chi-squared less than 11, that's going to put us in here, not far enough away from 0 to reject. And if the chi-square is more than 11, then we're in here, that's going to lead us to reject the statistic. So next we need to do step, so this was step 4. And step 5 is to calculate the statistic. Calculate the statistic. We have the original data table in front of us. These traffic counts are the observed values. The next step is to put down what the expected values are. Now, remember, the null hypothesis in this case is that the traffic counts are evenly distributed. In that case, the expected value is the value of traffic such that all of the traffic counts for each bridge are equal. In other words, we, the expected value would be the mean traffic count. So here we've got 600 total cars crossing bridges, and if those cars were crossing the six bridges evenly, you'd have 100 cars per bridge. And that's just the expected value of traffic if they were evenly distributed under the null hypothesis. The next step is to calculate OI minus EI. So in this case, We've got 40, 20, 20, 10, 25, and 5. And now we need to square that. So we've got 1,600, 400, 400, 100, 625 and 25. And finally, we need to divide this by EI. OI minus EI, all squared, divided by EI. And that's going to be equal to 16, 4, 4, 1, 6.25 and 0 0.25. Because remember, EI in each case is just 100. Finally, in order to compute the test, which is the sum of OI minus EI all squared over EI, that's our chi-squared. I equals 1. In this case, we're doing six categories. This is equal to 31.5. We just summed across uh, down this column. Going back to our figure, a chi-squared of 31.5 is somewhere way out in the tail. And therefore, step six is to reject the, reject the null. So we can say, we can be 95% sure that the differences that we see there are significant.